Okay, uh, so this week uh, we will continue talking about the different types of the graphs. So last week uh, we introduced those most common type of the graphs or the, uh, the basic types of the graphs. So this week we will talk about something that a little bit complicated, uh, so a little bit advanced and also not that commonly used as the ones that we mentioned last week. Uh, so the first one is called a slope graph. So slope graph normally is used to show the trend okay, of a variable across two time periods. So normally it should compare the ranks and also it, normally between the two time periods. Uh, so this is one example that we can see that they also highlighted one specific variable that increasing. Okay. Um, and this is another example shows the alcohol uh, consumption. Okay. And where you can see that uh, they are using red colors to highlight the increase of the consumption uh, over those two years. Okay. And this is another example that shows uh, the trend over two time periods. Um, but actually, um, they're using two colors. So use blue color to indicate increase and also use a red color to indicate their decrease. Okay, so it is predicted and also actual. So, um, so for the two um, category, not two time and period. Uh, so that the uh, the slope graph. Uh, we also seen that the spark lines on the spark bars. So those are you can consider that uh, a tiny line chart or the bar chart with the size of the text. Okay. Uh, so they are going to um, they are very small word size graphics to add it uh, to to add contact to numbers. Uh, so this is one example that. Uh, we have those numbers and without the spark lines and here we have spark line to show the trends of this variable and in this example we can see that uh, we highlighted the the end point and in this example we add uh, a background to show the normal values of this variable and it also allow us to compare different variables together so uh, here we can see we can see the trend of those three variables all together um, by using these uh, spark lines, so it can give us a general idea of the trend. So actually, it's very common to see nowadays, uh, especially that, for example, if uh, you are buying the stock market and uh, you are buying the stocks, uh, you will see the uh, spark lines. And also, if you have an app talking about the weather, climate change, and you will also see the spark lines. And they, they even now have the spark tweets so that uh, they can even uh, with a very short um, small spark uh, bars that indicate the values that they change and they can put that, that one on a single tweet, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, next, we will talk some variations of the bar chart. So the, the first one is lollipop chart. So uh, we're so it's still using the lens to tell the variables in different categories. However, we have the big dot, and we have very tiny thin line. Okay, so the value of the dot indicated the uh, the values in in each category. So we are see more examples of this one. Uh, we also have the bullet graph. So bullet graph is used to compare. Um, uh, the two variables, so normally it's used to compare the target and also performance uh, within a within the performance within a specific range. Okay, so normally we have this little bar that indicates the target value, and we have this um, this bar, vertical bar, that to show the actual value, so whether or not we have reached uh, our target or not. And also this dark area shaded area is talking about the skills like for example bad a good satisfactory etc uh, so here are some examples we can see it is very easy to compare that 
uh, in different categories. So whether or not uh, we have reached our goals. Okay, so it's very easy to see that uh, the performance compare the performance. And here is another example. So um, this may look like a little bit complicated, um, but in Tableau, so uh, we can create a bullet graph just in one second. So we all see that in today's lab. And we also see some variations of the bullet bar chart. So for example, in this, something, something similar to the bullet bar. So we're using um, two variables. So in, uh, on the top, we are showing the numbers. At the bottom, we are showing, we, are look, we, are, we can see that the percentage. OK, so those are some variations of the bullet chart. Uh, we also have the stacked bar chart. OK, so that is used to show the different categories um, within each single bar. So we have multiple categories. Uh, however, they all come from a common baseline. So that is easier uh, for us to, to compare. However, be cautious that so uh, we should not have too many segments. OK, so for example, if you have uh, a lot of categories, so that is easy and that is very hard for you to compare. Another thing that is very similar is called diverging uh, bar chart. So it is similar to the previous one, but here uh, the baseline is uh, at the middle. OK, so it also provides a precise quantitative comparison for each diverging segment. OK, and also at the same time, it also allows a relative comparison of the segment as well. OK. So like uh, gray versus gray and also gray versus blue. OK. Uh, Gantt chart is also um, another uh, uh, chart we see a lot. So especially that you use to see to show that the amount of the work completed uh, in a segment of time. So especially when we are going to write some proposals uh, or if we want to manage a project. So we use Gantt chart to show the progress. And waterfall chart is used is using the height and also sometimes using color uh, to to encode data showing increase or decrease uh, over uh, a specific time period. Okay, so um, show the increase or the decrease of a specific category. So sometimes we use one color to inc indicate increase and use another color to indicate a decrease. And dot plot is another visualization that uses the uh, positions to show the comparisons. So um, this can be from a common baseline or can simply show the dots without a common baseline to show the positions from each other. OK, uh, and this is an example, another way that shows a lot of points uh, uh, in a dot plot. OK, so we can see that the most common values in each variable, in each category. And also we can see we also have some uh, outliers. OK, so how those uh, uh, data are distributed in different category and also in different range. OK, so that is dot plot. Um, we also have the highlight table. So that is basically that gives the uh, the table of uh, background colors, okay, and we can use colors to highlight the difference of the values in the table. And if we remove those numbers and we convert that one into a heat map, okay, so that also can use, uh, we can use heat map to show, to highlight the difference in the table, so without using numbers. And instead of using colors, and we can also use a size so that will give us a tree map so that we're using size and also sometimes we can also use color to show the hierarchy data okay so where there is a very large number of categories to compare that uh, 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 there's a hierarchy all um, within a data set so this is an example that we can see that um, this block show the population in Asia um, Africa, 
Americas, Europe, uh, Middle East, and the others. So here we can see all together show the population of the entire world. And within each uh, region, and we can see the different countries. OK, so that's the tree map. And this is another example of the tree map. So this example that shows up for the categorical comparison without hierarchy. OK, so um, they just those are just different banks. OK, and we're using the size to indicate uh, the number of complaints that they have received. Uh, we also have the other bar chart to show the different the other perspective of the data set. OK, um, we also have the bubble chart. So that is uh, using the size of the circle to show the to to uh, to compare the values of different categories. And you may also uh, you may already notice that this is not recommended, which is the same reason for the pie chart, because a uh, human has less accurate perceptions for those areas. OK, so the bubble chart um, may look like very pretty, but not recommended. And the same reason for this concentrate circles, OK, also not recommended. OK, so we, because they are still using the two dimensional uh, symbols to representing to compare the values. OK. And also same for the donut chart. OK, so still not recommended, but we see that we see those visualizations a lot, but it's not very um, not the best choice for very accurate um, comparisons. And, the and also same reason for the word cloud, so that we are using the size to see the frequency of the different word, OK, and which is also not recommended. Um, clock graph, clock graph is used to use, um, it's very easy to compare the values in different categories. So if you have a lot of categories and you if you want to compare that one all together and you can consider using the clock graph. OK, um, and also we, can, we see that clock graph can also be used for the directional data like and also the winter rows. OK, uh, so that is a uh, this is kind of similar. Uh, it's a variation of the line chart, but we have put that into a circular circular format. 3D graph. 3D graph is that uh, it's also now become more and more popular. And so we just use this uh, 3D object that to visualize uh, the data and which is not also not recommended um, because people has the least accurate perceptions of the 3D dimension symbols. OK, so we have the most accurate perception for the one dimension. OK, and we tend to underestimate for the two dimensions. And we have the least uh, accurate perception uh, for the 3D dimensions. OK, so those are the, the other types of the graphs. And I also just want to highlight um, some basic principles of the data visualization uh, from Schaffer. OK, and we, uh, we, all were, we, we already mentioned some principles in our uh, first class, but here I just want to highlight the Schaffer's principles. So it is called three C's. Clear, clean, concise, and captivating. OK, so we should have a very clearly defined story that a, a, uh, a message that to be delivered to our audience. And it should be very all the labels, axes, grid lines, formattings, and the type of chart colors should be very clean and also should be concise. OK, so you uh, you don't need you don't want to make your visualization to be very, very complicated so that the, the audience needs to spend like 50 minutes to understand your visualization. So if that's the case, then that is not a success date visualization. And also to be attractive. OK, but make sure it is very clean and also concise and 
uh, you can think about how can make your visualization to be attractive. 